for the purposes of this simulation, I'll be Arthur C. Clarke. This is the opening page of my personal federated wiki. I own this, only I can write on this. And I have this idea for a global positioning system. I'm going to add a link on my journal, and I can add it anywhere, call the page Global Positioning System. And since it is a wiki, uh, I can click it. Automatic linking creates the page. And here I'll type in the idea. So I type in this idea that if you have three geosynchronous satellites in orbit, they can ping you the time, you can examine the delays, you can use that to triangulate your position. But I notice that I've missed something as I, as I look at this. I actually want to link to my geosynchronous satellites page as well. And this is where it's different than, say, Evernote or some of these systems, because we move from simply capturing knowledge to starting to connect it. And we can look at that former page here. We're cre creating a dense network of, of personal knowledge. And so I think I might be done here uh, as Arthur C. Clarke, but I realize I have forgotten something. As I look at the recent changes, I remember that I didn't add a link from the geosynchronous satellites page back to the global positioning page. And this sort of stuff is important. So this is that first part. This is the personal piece. And you'll notice that unlike Twitter and blogging, I can really just do this for me. And likewise, if you're a person who is interested just in my ideas, uh, as Arthur C. Clarke or as uh, Carl Sagan or whoever, um, you can actually listen in to my wiki and just see what have I found interesting in the last few weeks? What have I written up in the last few weeks? And so even on this level where we're not connecting wikis together, it's, it's a pretty useful tool. But what I want to show you next is the point where we transition out of that knowledge capture tool to some of those routing functions that we see with things like Twitter and blogging. So now we go to Maria Borden's site. You can see that this is a different site. It's owned by Maria. She's got her picture up here. Maria is a rocket scientist, and she hasn't written much in her journal. She's not so much of a, a, of a writer as Arthur Clarke. She might add uh, here, she might add something on propulsion formulas that she's working on, but she's, she's not a heavy creator. She is, however, a heavy reader, and she follows all these people that are in science and uh, education, Arthur Clarke and me and John Udell and people like that. When we click that page, we see that we load all of these people into her recent changes. So now she can see what all of these uh, people have written. And there's a couple things that she wrote. You can tell that because she's the same color. And as she scrolls down, you can see that, oh, here's a new thing by Arthur Clarke. She reads it. She likes it. And instead of hitting a like button, what she decides to do is fork it to her site. The way we like things is we make copies of them. And so we just hit this flag. You'll see the color changes there. That color indicates uh, where the page came from. It's a, it's a history of the page. If I click that, we'll see the original page by uh, Arthur Clarke. So we can always trace authority back to original documents. This is, this is really all to say about Maria, but You'll see that this is very much like uh, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, something like that, just um, in, in a sort of a wiki, a wiki form. And that, that'll have some interesting implications in a minute. So here's where it gets really interesting. This is the site of George uh, Weifenbach, who's one of the people at the AP lab at Johns Hopkins, one of the people that's looking into the Doppler shift. Now, he doesn't follow Arthur C. Clarke the same way you don't follow everybody on Twitter. However, in his non-work friends, he actually does follow Maria. So when he goes to the recent changes, He's going to see a number of things, right? He's going to see um, some stuff from people he knows on, uh, here's an article on spontaneous order. But also, if he scrolls down, uh, he's going to see this geosynchronous satellites. And based on the icon he sees here, uh, he can see that this is from Maria. And um, she's also forked over this thing, uh, global positioning system. Now, down here in the journal, we actually see this red thing which shows uh, that it comes from Arthur C. Clarke, if we hover over that. But here's where things get really interesting. Instead of just forking it, he's going to edit it. And he's going to add um, a note here that similar uh, results could be attained uh, in a low Earth orbit 
if you did this uh, using the Doppler effect. And you can see what's happening here. This is now on his site, right? He's added information. The people that follow him will see this new version. They'll be able to see the edits he added. They'll be able to go back to the Clark version. They'll be able to see that Maria forked it, um, but did not add anything to it. And so what's happening uh, is as information moves through the system, it's being expanded and extended by the nodes that it touches, right? Now here's where things get really neat. We go back, uh, we're Arthur C. Clarke now again, and we load our list of physicists, and we check our recent changes. And what we see is that our global positioning system article has been edited. And so we look at this and, and uh, we go and we see the newer version. And we think, you know what, this is actually right. He's absolutely right. In fact, I'll give you two reasons why a low Earth orbit might even be a better orbit than geostationary. And so he comes in here and he edits uh, this stuff um, and says, look, uh, LEO satellites would have a longer life, et cetera, and Doppler positioning would give you a finer grained location data. And now if we come back here and we look and, and see um, from the point of view of George, we can see Arthur's, we can see Arthur's updates. Right? If I accept Arthur's updates, now all the people that are following me will see the newer version that incorporates uh, both my initial reply and then Arthur's expansion of my reply. And so you see what's happened here is we started out as note-taking, right, and collecting and capturing information. We moved to a sort of a Twitter-like, blog-like phase where the information routed around, we read it, and so forth. And now we're starting to fall into something that looks, uh, to me, very wiki-like, where we're starting to reach a, uh, some, sort of, uh, some sort of consensus. And we're working on uh, ideas and expanding them uh, rather than just giving thumbs up or thumbs down. And that's the really exciting thing, is how it captures this full life cycle of information.